if your business depends on you, the more valuable it is. Let me say this one more time. The less your business depends on you, the more valuable it is. The more your business depends on you, the less valuable it is. This is why a lot of, uh, when you see, you know, businesses that it's just about sales and a product goes out and there's no, resi- no renewals or no residuals on it, you don't see a big X factor from private equity firms. Private equity firms are not interested in buying a business that's just sales transaction and if the personality leaves and nothing's gonna be there. So your goal is to just try to see this observation right here. This is you, this is value. Your goal is to bring you like this so the value goes higher. So if all of a sudden the business is there and you're not around, the, the business is gonna be higher and higher in value. Do we buy Apple today based on jobs? No, jobs did his part, did his part right. So that's the part about the replacement game. The one company no one's even talking about today, everybody's given a lot of love to two companies. One is Amazon, one is Apple. You know what's the one company no one's talking about today? Microsoft. They're about to be the trillion dollar company next. Bill Gates understood this concept of taking them here so Microsoft's value is here. So now let's go through this. Thinking like a CEO. Look, most of us in this room, almost everybody in this room, if you think about a grant who now goes out there and buys a plane, that's worth 60, 70 million dollars telling me he buys it cash. How did he start off? Most of us start as an employee. Who at one point of their lives has had a job? Okay, if you do this behavior, we pay you 20 bucks an hour. If you do this behavior, you make 15 bucks an hour. Whatever it is, you get paid per hour, right? Then you go from employee to being a salesperson. Sales agent, salesperson, sales, whatever you want to call it. The difference from the mindset of an employee to this is what? How many people have seen a person that goes from being an employee to a salesperson fail miserably immediately? Because an employee, someone's telling you what to do. When you become a salesperson, no one's telling you what to do. So you have to learn that mindset has to shift for you to realize if I don't get to work, I'm not gonna, you know. You ever hear people that become salespeople all the time? I'm an employee and I become a salesperson and then they don't show up to the office for two days. How come you're not at the office? Well, look, I'm an independent contractor and I don't have to show up, right? I mean, this is why I did this, so I can stay home and have my own schedule. That's a gimmick, man, you're buying into. He's about to be an employee very soon because he has no idea what it is to be an independent contractor, right? So then from this mindset comes the next one. What's the next one? You become a sales leader. There's a big different mindset between this and this. What is it? Here's the difference. It's very difficult. Let me explain. Once you get good in sales, I know how to go sell 10 of these to an AV company and I make 600 bucks, okay? So I know I know how to make money, but I have to teach him how to go sell this and I have no patience to teach him because he doesn't understand it and I have to coach him. So this is when you'll hear a lot of people that transition from here to here, use the phrase, how many have heard somebody say, I'm sick and tired of babysitting people. I don't like babysitting people, I'm so sick and tired of babysitting people. It's not babysitting people, it's mindset that's not in place. Then from sales leader, what comes next? You become a business owner. Now what's the difference mindset between a sales leader and a business owner? Now you got assistance, now you got cost, now you got office, rent, compliance, payroll, accounting, legal, all this stuff that you gotta go through. And that's when you hear people from here don't make it here and they go back. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go start my own business. I had no idea this is what it was like. I'm gonna go back and I just wanna run a sales team. This is also a shift in mindset. And then you could be a great business owner, but you're not a good CEO. And that's where I was at. So I learned how to run a sales team, I learned how to sell, I learned how to run a business, but I wanted to think like a CEO. And so one day I'm sitting there and I'm asking myself, literally, I have no clue what to do. This is like five, six years, I'm like, I don't know what to do. So what does a CEO do? What does a founder do? What's supposed to be my day to day? And I became obsessed about figuring out a formula that tells me the CEO what I need to do to maximize my time. I can do 50 different behaviors, but which ones give me the highest amount of uh, revenue and increase the value of the company? So that's when this formula came about of linear versus exponential growth. How many people here have somebody that works for them 70, 80 hours a week, but their income is absolutely flat? Right? What happens when you go through it? You start really telling yourself, this thing doesn't work. Business isn't for me. I just don't know what people are talking about. Right? What am I doing? This is the difference. 
a lot of the focus that person's putting in is here and not here. This expands, this doesn't. So what's the difference? Let's talk about the four areas of focus. So linear, exponential. A-type personalities, they don't pay attention to this. Right? Big personalities, they don't pay attention to this. By the way, big personalities, they get annoyed by this. It's like, oh my gosh, give me a break. That doesn't really matter. I don't need to think about systems. I don't need to think about operations. What are you talking about here? So we start the business. My wife says, babe, we need to buy this software. We don't need to buy this software. We need to focus on sales. We need to buy this software because the sales is coming in. What are we going to do if we don't get the software? Do you know how much the software costs? I can take this money and put it in advertising. It's going to help. Babe, I get it. But we are going nuts here. You need six people to process 10 pieces of business. If we buy this software for half a million dollars, you need one person. And it's going to process 50 pieces of business. Why are we putting ourselves through this? So you have to hire more employees. Let's get this software. I still don't get it. Let me do the math. Here's what we're looking at. If you got six employees at 50 grand, that's $300,000. This is the limit we have. If you want to go higher, you need 12 employees, $600,000, 24 employees, one point. Do you want to increase your payroll? No. Then let's buy the software. That's operations. So then we bought the software. Then everything was clicking. Tick, 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 tick. So this is more like, hey, I get a loan. From the loan, it goes to escrow. From escrow, it goes to, you know, give me some of the processes. Escrow goes into title, title appraisal, all these things you're going through. That's operations. It's boring. But if I can figure out a way to close the loan faster, if I can figure out a way to place the policy faster, I get ahead. Again, what I just talked about, most people are bored out of their minds. Let me explain this part about investors. We have one of our investors, a $5 billion fund from New York, Adelaide Fund. Okay? Oscar De La Hoya is another one. Gabriel Brenner is another one. Okay? Here's how investors look at you. They first look at you, they say, wow. He's so impressive. Then they give you money based on this. They don't give you money based on your personality. They give you money once they see this. So all the A-type personality, the excited, big, you know, you know Bachisma, all those guys, if you don't pay attention to this, forget about valuation. You may look good because you made a few sales, you're not building value, okay? Operations is constantly figuring out, like you make a list, you make lists and say, this job, this job, this job, this job. I'm doing seven different things right now. Why am I doing these seven different things? I need somebody that helps me with this. I need somebody that helps me with this. That's operations. Biz dev. What's biz dev? Okay. Relationships. So strategic partnerships. Finding somebody that if I help you, you win here and I win here. You give me clients, I give you clients. We cross-pollinate, everybody wins. Strategic partnerships, biz dev. That means you got to shake hands. So do you make a list and say, who would benefit from what I'm doing right now? Who can I help that I also need their help? This is the part where you gotta go out and shake hands. Whatever industry you're in, there's annual conferences. There's annual conventions. Whatever industry you're part of, you gotta go to them. You gotta go to them and get ready, shake hands. Shake hands, we have our own. And by the way, the insurance industry, just so you know, you name me one product in the world more boring than life insurance. Let me say this one more time to you. I'm in the industry. You name me one product more boring than life insurance. Hear me out, guys. What I do for a living is we talk about dying every day. Listen, we come to you, and the moment the word life insurance comes up, what do people do? A guy came up here with a camera in my face. He says, hey, Pat, what do you think about the PNC and insurance future of the industry? What do you think is going to happen to PNC and insurance? I said, it's a big difference. He said, no, it's not, it's insurance. I said, no, believe me, it's a big difference. Why is it a big difference? He was at this event like six hours ago. He says, what's the big difference? I said, it's a law to buy auto insurance. <laughs> it's not a law to buy life insurance. It's a choice. And life insurance always has to be what? Sold. I have to come sell it to you. No one wakes up and says, babe, I feel so good about buying some life insurance today, babe. Let's go get some life insurance today. Oh my gosh, no one does that. So I have to find a way to get to you, right? So we go to these conferences and we shake hands and we build relationships and we see new products, new things coming out, new relationships. 